That's the atomic number. It's not going to be a fraction. It's not going to be a decimal. Right? Atomic symbol. You got this. Atomic weight is the average weight of all the isotopes that are found for that element, probably based on Earth. So uh, it's usually like fractiony or you know decimally, and there might be some aluminum 27, some aluminum 26. I mean, when you average it all together, it ends up being 26.981. There are other reasons why this will deviate from like a nice round number, but I don't really want to go into them unless we have time. Okay. So, check this out. What if I gave you aluminum? What's that question mark? Is that? Number yes, number of protons. And we know it's aluminum, right? So that's enough information to get it. How many protons does aluminum have? Yeah, you could, you could look this up, right? You go, oh, hey, look, 13. Easy points. No, no math, just looking on the map and finding it. Okay. And I got this right. I mean, every time I get a number correct, you should be like, wow, <laughs> it's my lucky day um, for, for you, because you're having to consume this stuff. A, um, yep, so the atomic mass number, the number of nucleons, is 27. So if there are 13 protons, that means there has to be 14 neutrons to add up to 27, right? Total charge is 3. So that means that there are 3 more protons than there are electrons. So there can only be 10 electrons. Uh-oh. So how do I figure out what element this is? What, what defines an element? Is it the number of neutrons? Number yeah. Yeah, number of protons. OK. So, so it was an atomic number of 1, so it's got to be a hydrogen. OK, so yeah. See, the atomic number is 1. There's one proton in the nucleus. So you look in the periodic table, and the symbol should be H. Um, there are zero neutrons in here, right? The, there's one proton, and you know there's just one nucleon, so no neutrons. There's no extra mass to account for. And there's zero electrons because there's just one proton, and it has a plus one charge. If there's just a plus, it means plus one. If there's just a minus, it means minus one. If it's a higher charge than that, or a more higher magnitude charge than that, then it's going to be with numbers. But it's implied that there's a 1. Yeah, so this is the list of things you're supposed to memorize. I'm, if you go on to further chemistry stuff, it's really nice to know that potassium is K. I mean, you know, that's nice. But um, I don't like the idea of making you memorize stuff you don't have to memorize. That's what Google's for, right? Google's there to make you not have to do that stuff. You're supposed to be thinking. Um, yeah. All right, so I think it's time for clicker questions. Anybody have any questions about how to do this kind of problem? Because I'm going to have a couple pretty soon. Yes? <laughs> for what? For the clicker? Yeah, I'll, I'll provide one, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, you won't have to memorize periodic table. You won't have to memorize anything, I would recommend that you kind of familiarize yourself and know that like H is hydrogen, so you don't have to keep flipping back between some kind of a table, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not asking you guys to know, memorize the position. I've had classes where they do that, and it's really annoying. It's like, don't you have more material to teach me? Making me memorize like one of the more, I don't know, like, I, you could probably go to like an alien world, like, if, if one exists, and they'd have some kind of a periodic table, right? Like, it's basically as universal as it gets. Um, all right, if there are any questions about this, I have some sort of like uh, conceptual questions for clicker questions. If you guys are up for it. Yeah? yeah. All right, clicker question time. All right. Okay, so let me get the clicker thing up if I can find it. Okay, so go ahead and put your uh, clickers up. And so this is uh, 
blood. <laughs> Hang on, let me. There I guess. I'm not technically a professor. Okay. Uh, ha. All right. Yep. So D2O is more dense than water. Not that exciting. Isotopes. So this is a visual depiction of what I explained before with three different hydrogen isotopes. There's regular, I guess, protium, um, just one proton, one electron. Deuterium has one proton, one neutron. Tritium has one proton and two neutrons. So you can see that like, we're still calling these things all hydrogen, but they have different number of neutrons, so they're different isotopes. Uh, each element has a specific number of protons. Covered that. Um, yeah, That's pretty basic stuff. You already know how to do this. Or you're there. You're getting there. Okay, what do you guys think? Uh, let's, let's do a clicker question. All right. So remember how I said that the number of protons defines the element. All right. So we know that it has to be either C or E. And then when, I, when they say isotopes, they really mean different isotopes of a given. What makes two isotopes different is the number of nu neutrons. Same protons, because they're the same element, different number of neutrons. Make sense? Yeah? All right, everybody agrees. Oh, oh wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Electrons, C. Right, that says electrons, right? Ions differ in the number of electrons, not isotopes. Vocabulary, yeah, vocabulary. So. Ions are different numbers of electrons. Like, if the number of electrons don't equal the number of protons, you'd call the atom an ion. Um, so for isotopes, you're not even worried about counting electrons. You're counting neutrons. For elements, you're counting protons. Try not to misspeak. OK, so the answer is going to be E. Right? Different numbers of neutrons in the nucleus make different isotopes. OK. How many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in an oxygen-18 atom? What do you guys think? You can, re you can reverse your, your answers so that they don't pop up as historical stuff. Z equals 8. That's our symbol for the atomic number. So how many protons would they have? 8, right? So we have, so far, that, that component, everybody's getting that. Protons, there's 8 of them. Yes. How many neutrons would there be if the total atomic mass number for that nucleus is 18? 10, yeah. Well, we, got, we got some people are saying E. Very good. OK. And then how many electrons? Well, since we called it an atom and not an ion, that means the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. So that means that uh, we're going to have eight, eight electrons, right? Does that make sense? Um, when someone says an atom and they don't specify a charge, it implies that there is no charge. So that means the number of protons and number of electrons are equal. So if the atomic number is 8, that means the number of protons are 8. And that means that the number of electrons must also be 8 to balance out those protons. So D is the correct answer. And everybody's buying it, more or less, right? Some people are like, eh, all right. I have coffee, so I can do this forever. Um, <laughs> all right, we covered this. Atomic weight, as I said before, is how you add up the weights of the different isotopes and their different abundances. And that tells you how much like the average amount of, or the average weight of a hydrogen on Earth. And this slide, I'm not going to require that you know about what the standard is for how atomic mass is calculated. I don't think that's really that big of a deal. but. Uh, it's there if you're interested. As it turns out, there are deviations from like 
the atomic accounting I'm teaching you, but they're very useful and uh, so people think about it to a first approximation, so I don't want to confuse you too much. Uh, yes, so periodic table. Um, you saw that from left to right, atomic number increases by one from element to element. And what's interesting about it is that the vertical columns of the periodic table tell you a lot about the reactivity of the elements. So the position of the elements can tell you a lot about what's going to happen to them in a reaction or how they're going to exist in a molecule. So nonmetals, which are on the right, they're shown in white on this graph, and also hydrogen, it's, it's kind of out there, but it also rea reacts as though it's a metal for the most part. Sorry, uh, it does react sometimes as though it's a nonmetal, sometimes it's a metal. Um, these elements tend to gain electrons. They either have like covalent bonds or they gain electrons. The metals tend to lose electrons. Remember how I said, this is actually annoying, this, this is the uh, noble gases? They really don't do much reactivity. They're like considered to be uh, inert for the most part. So uh, the way I learned it was they're called noble gases because they're too good to interact with uh, other things. So they don't react very much. Uh, very rare that they react. Um, so what ends up happening, I said this was kind of like a board game, uh, elements will tend to react to gain the nearest noble gas configuration of electrons. And all that means is that like if an uh, element is like here and it's like fluorine, I should pull up a periodic table. Here we go. So fluorine is like right next to neon. Neon has eight valence electrons. It has a noble gas configuration. It is a noble gas. When fluorine reacts, it tends to beg, borrow, steal one electron so that it has the electronic configuration of neon. So things kind of move or react to get that number of electrons. Sodium has one electron more than neon, right? You see that? Like neutral neon will have 10 electrons because it has 10 protons. Neutral sodium will have 11 electrons because it has 11 protons. In, on Earth, for the most part, sodium will react to give away one electron so that it has a electronic configuration of neon. So the bottom line is that for elements that are really close to those um, noble gases, you can figure out what kind of charge they're going to have based on how many electrons they either steal or give up. So for example, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, uh, antimony? Don't quote me on that one. Uh, um, this row, these are halogens. I don't know why. You don't have to memorize that. I don't care. The, um, that group will tend to gain one electron, so they'll end up having a negative one charge in most ionic um, molecules. Sodium, potassium, um, cesium, francium, rubidium, I think, lithium, sometimes hydrogen, will lose an electron to gain a noble gas configuration. Hydrogen will usually actually pick up an extra electron somehow. Um, not as an ionic thing, but we'll, we'll talk about covalent bonding in a bit where there's not so much stealing but sharing of electrons. So if you had a molecule like lithium fluoride, or someone wrote down LIF and said, hey, this is a molecule, tell me about it. You'd be like, wow, well, lithium, it's got one more electron than helium, so it must have given one up to have a stable configuration. And fluorine has one less than neon, so hey, maybe it picks one up to have a stable configuration. So you'd say, yeah, lithium fluoride, that looks like it's going to be an ionic compound. The lithium's going to have a plus one charge on it the fluorine is going to have a minus one charge on it. Just by reading this chart, it's really that easy. It's, it's like if you see it being really 